Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the seminar. Today, uh, Sarit Agami will be speaking. So, uh, Sarit, uh, please take it away. Okay, so um, thanks, Henry. I have some problem that I can hear you, but you can hear me. So, uh, I hope um, I can handle with this. So, um, um, this is um, 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 uh, this is a joint work with uh, Professor Adler from uh, the Technion, and um, the gen general idea is to to uh, produce a replication of a persistent diagram uh, when one has only one persistent diagram in hand, and um, I will give. Uh, some words about the persistent diagram before we continue, just uh, to be sure that we talk about uh, everything that is clear. So um, suppose we have some uh, function, one-dimensional function from 0, 1 uh, to R, and um, uh, we consider the sublevel sets uh, that going from uh, minus uh, infinity to some x. So uh, by the Morse theory, um, um, once we have um, uh, a local minimum, we consider it as a, a birth time, and and when we uh, meet in a, a local maximum, we consider it as um, the death time. So just uh, to, I took uh, some nice, I think, example from uh, the paper of uh, Kazala and Michel. So here is the function from zero one. Uh, to R. So, for example, look at a point that um, start with uh, A3. So, we can see that in A3 we have a local minimum, and therefore this is the birth time. And once we go up, uh, we meet uh, a local maximum at A4, and this is the, the death time. So, by this we build the persistent diagram. Um, but here we we come from uh, the lower level sets, but uh, we can do the same thing from the upper level sets, and then uh, everything the same. Just only the, the one different is that uh, instead of to, to get birth, it's uh, uh, smaller than that. So if we come from uh, above in the upper level sets, we have that the death is lower than uh, the birth. So this is the persistent uh, diagram. And another thing is that the points that are far from the diagonal are considered as topological signals. And this is uh, the points that we are interested in. And the points that are close to the diagonal are considered as nodes. Okay, so this is in general. And now, now suppose we have only one persistent uh, diagram in end, and we want to do uh, some statistical inference. So for us, if we have only one persistent diagram, it's, it's like we have one point uh, in a sample. And in order to do statistical inference, we need more points or more persistent diagram. So how to obtain um, a more persistent diagram once we have only one in end? So um, the first so solution is uh, to use the bootstrap, which means to subsampling um, from what we have, or so this means that we can take the subsampling or from the data or from the persistent diagram itself. So this is already considered in Fazi et al. and in uh, Kazal et al. But we want to uh, to suggest uh, other thing. So um, we suggest the RST, with, which is the replicating statistical topo statistical Topology, topology, and this is a joint work with Professor Adler and uh, uh, Dr. Pratyush uh, Pranav. And the idea is as follows. If we have uh, the persistent diagram, we fit some parametric model uh, to the points on the persistent diagram. And once we have this model, we can produce a replicated uh, persistent diagram by using the MCMC based on this parametric uh, model. So in our, in our work, we consider 
uh, this function that we fit for the model, we consider the kernel density estimator as the function for building the persistent diagram. And we also consider the upper level sets so that the death, the death time is lower than the birth time. Uh, so now I will give uh, the model and I will show some example how to use uh, this model. So the model is based on what we call the Gibbs distribution. So suppose we have uh, some, some finite uh, collection set of uh, X. So we define the, the Gibbs distribution phi theta of Xn to be one over uh, Z theta X of uh, in minus um, H theta. The H theta, we call it the Hamiltonian function. And the Z theta is just um, the expression to normalize uh, all this uh, expression in order to have a density of function. And in our case, uh, we, we just uh, take as X to be uh, X1 to be the death time. And by x2, we take uh, the difference of birth minus death. And by this, all this live in uh, r times r plus. Now the question is how to choose this uh, Hamiltonian. So we, we have two steps. The, the first step is we want to take into account the neighbors and the spread of the points on the persistent diagram. So for the spread, we define uh, sigma uh, sigma square h, which um, uh, this is related to uh, the spread of x1, and we define sigma square v to be uh, uh, the spread of uh, x2, and this is for the spread, and for the neighbors, we consider for each point on the persistent diagram, we consider the k nearest neighbors, with distance which is small, smaller or equal some delta. And we took their uh, uh, distance uh, L, delta K, and by combining all uh, these distances and the spread, we can write the, the expression for the Hamiltonian by taking some coefficients for the spread of H and V and um, and um, um, coefficients for this uh, distance of the k nearest neighbors. So this is the Hamiltonian that we want to suggest. Now the question is, what is this uh, parameter uh, delta for the distance? So um, for the um, determining the threshold of delta, we want to take into account the, the number of the points on the persistent diagram and the spread. And the spread. So we suggest uh, the following uh, formula, which is uh, based on this uh, n number of points, and it's, it, take, it takes into account the range of x1 and x2. So this is uh, our model, and once we have the Gibbs uh, distribution with this Hamiltonian, we can estimate the parameters of theta. Uh, we can estimate it by uh, the usual uh, log likelihood. But the problem here that we have this, um, we have uh, the expression of uh, the partition function, which is impossible to calculate, this, since this is the integral over the all points we have uh, in our hand. So therefore, we don't look at the usual maximum likelihood estimation, but instead we consider the pseudo maximum likelihood estimation, which means that we condition on uh, the nearest neighbors. And by this, uh, we need to calculate the partition function, which, which based only on two variables in, instead of all the n variables we have. And this is, this we can calculate, and this is uh, much better than try to calculate the partition function, which based on all the uh, n variables. So therefore, we consider this uh, a likelihood. Um, and we can estimate uh, this, the parameters of theta, theta h, theta v, and theta k. We can estimate by just 
uh, maximize this likelihood or the log uh, likelihood. Okay, now the the uh, the question is how many uh, um, nearest neighbors we take or what is the value of k? So uh, we just tried uh, um, some simulation and we saw that uh, k equals three is enough to take. And in addition, uh, we should note about the model selection. We can, well, actually we can fit all this Hamiltonian with the five parameters, which is the full model, but instead we can consider a family of models which take into, into account some combinations of uh, this data. So for example, we have uh, theta one, uh, theta h, and theta v as one optional uh, model, or theta two, uh, theta v and theta h, etc. So we consider the family of all the combinations uh, of uh, theta, and we choose the best model by uh, the measures of AIC, BIC, which are uh, the regular measures for uh, choosing the best model. So this is the general uh, model. And once we have this uh, model in hand, we can use uh, uh, the MCMC in order to produce uh, the persistent diagrams based on this model. So we use the metropolis hasting algorithm, which uh, requires to have some target function and some proposal uh, function. So um, here in our case, the target function is uh, the log uh, likelihood or the log pseudo likelihood. And as a proposal function, uh, as a proposal distribution, we took uh, the, the, the bivariate normal distribution with uh, the mean and covariance of the points in, um, uh, in X and or in the original persistent diagram. So um, if we use this um, uh, um, procedure of MCMC to produce the replicated uh, persistent diagram, we can use now um, the replicated persistent diagrams in order, for example, to inference about the identification of topological signals. So what we mean to do here, so as I said before, the, the four points on the persistent diagrams are uh, considered as a topological signals, but we don't know are these significant or not because we have only one persistent diagram in end. So therefore we produce uh, these replicated persistent diagrams and now we can, by this uh, series of persistent diagrams, we can, um, we can uh, uh, know to inference about um, the significance of the topological signals we have. So we can write it as a, a hypothesis testing of the form of um, the null hypothesis means that the points on the persistent diagram follow the estimated model, we, should, we suggested. And the alternative is just is that we, they don't. They don't follow the, um, the estimated model. So how, how we can test it? So for example, we suggest to look at the maximum uh, statistics, uh, which, um, which we denoted by Tj where Tj is the j larger among the difference of death minus birth. And we can, we can do, um, we can use the same method of um, um, the bootstrap in order to do this testing. So we have, we denote by T hat the T that based on the real persistent diagram and but by T hat uh, star B, which is the, the statistic that is based on the our simulated per persistent diagram or our MCMC uh, persistent diagram, and we can uh, just check this uh, um, uh, hypothesis by these uh, statistics. So, for example, if we consider two circles um, of uh, a sample of 800 points. Uh, from two circles with diameters of four and two. So this is uh, the sample we have. And if we fit the kernel density estimator for this 
uh, sample, we have the persistent diagram. This is the persistent diagram. So we see that we have two, um, two black points that are far from the diagonal. Uh, the, black the, the black points are uh, described the connected component. And uh, these uh, red triangles are uh, described uh, holes in the persistent diagram. So as we expect, we have here, since we have here two circles, we expect to have two connected components, and these are expressed by these two points, as we wish uh, to have. And now uh, we produced, uh, now we ask, are these two uh, points uh, significantly um, in statistic uh, methods? So therefore, we produced um, uh, replicated persistent diagram by our model. Uh, and, and we did it, uh, we produced a um, uh, thousand uh, uh, MCMC persistent diagrams. And we calculate uh, the statistics of TJ. And we f now please note that uh, once we do the analysis, uh, we know that uh, we have one point which is um, uh, located at the infinity point, we know that it always exists in every persistent diagram. Therefore, we can, well, actually, this is not uh, the real location, but we don't have enough um, space in the usual page to present it as the infinity point. So, but we know that it, this expressed the infinity points. So, so therefore, we drop this point uh, from uh, our analysis because we know it is always there. And our uh, model adjusts for all the H0 points, all the connected components points, but without the points at infinity. So now uh, uh, we check the, um, the T, TJ uh, statistics. So we found that T1 and T2 were highly significant. And T3 were marginally significant at 5%, uh, and T4 was insignificant. So what we understand from this uh, analysis that we have two uh, connected components that are significantly uh, at a level of 5%. Uh, and, but we remember that we have a drop the point at infinity, so therefore we have three connected components in this uh, uh, story. But actually, um, by this, we recognize uh, one more uh, connected component. We actually wanted to recognize just two connected components, but here we find another one, which is not that bad, but we want to improve uh, this model in order to uh, uh, capture only two uh, uh, significant connected component and not three. So therefore, we now uh, want uh, to to um, uh, improve it. So um, the improvement is um, it's just to um, to take again the same Gibbs model. Uh, so this is the form of the Gibbs model we had before. And again, we define x1 to be the death and x2 to, to be the birth minus death. Um, but now we want to improve the choosing of the Hamiltonian. So in the original uh, Hamiltonian, we had the spread and uh, the k nearest neighbors. But, but we need to add uh, the consideration of the shape of the diagram as well. So how we do that? Uh, first, we need some uh, good candidates for describing the shape of the, um, of the persistent diagram. So uh, for this, we take uh, the kernel density estimator as a candidate for the shape. And now we suggest the following Hamiltonian. Let's take again uh, the k nearest neighbors as before, but now drop the threshold of data that we had before. And also, instead of 
having the spread that we had before, we drop it and instead we put the kernel density estimator uh, for controlling the shape of the persistent diagram and we put it in power of alpha. So this is uh, uh, the new uh, Hamiltonian. And, and again, we continue with the same way as we had before. Note that this is again the pseudo likelihood and again we estimated the theta parameter by maximizing this uh, pseudo uh, likelihood. And once we have it, we can um, apply some MCMC method that use this target of the uh, log likelihood. But now in the proposal function, remember that we need for the metropolis acing, we need some proposal distribution. So now for the proposal distribution, we also use the kernel uh, density estimator. Um, so this is the uh, refined model that we uh, checked. And just for, um, just proceed the motivation if this really improved the uh, original uh, model or not, we consider the following examples. Suppose we have two distinct uh, circles. And again, we fitting uh, some kernel density estimator in order to produce the, in order to calculate the persistent diagram. So here is the persistent diagram. Note that here, uh, differently from, uh, uh, from the previous um, um, example, look that here we have two groups of connected components. Uh, in the example before we had, we had only one group of connected components, but here, since we have two distinct circles, we have uh, two groups of uh, connected components. Why this is important? Let's see. Um, if we... Um, okay, if we um, uh, fit the original model and the refined model, let's see how the MCMC uh, behaves um, relative to the original points on the persistent diagram. So in uh, red circles are the real uh, points on the persistent diagram. Again, we just consider the connected component, not the holes. So here uh, in red, this does, these are the real points on the persistent diagram. And now we fit uh, the MCM, we fit our original model and um, calculate the MCMC. Um, and the blue points are the points that uh, corresponded to the original model. And uh, these green diamonds are uh, related to the improved uh, Hamiltonian that we suggest with the shape uh, as the uh, with the KDE. So if we take uh, the step of 50 in the MCMC, we see that the both um, models capture the two uh, groups of the connected component. And once we uh, continue and go up with the value of the step of the MCMC, please note that in step of 500, uh, we can see that um, uh, that the original uh, model cannot capture the second group of the connected components, where the improved model uh, does uh, capture the um, the second group. So, and also if we continue in, uh, uh, to go in a larger step of the MCMC, for example, we take the step of thousand. Again, we see the same the same idea, that the modified model can capture the second group, uh, but the original model cannot capture um, the second group. And this is because now in the refined model, we add the shape uh, of the persistent diagram, and not only the spread and the neighbors. So it looks, it works, but uh, um, besides of this example, we won't uh, uh, something else. So uh, if we want to check the goodness of the fit, we can use, for example, 
uh, the tool of hierarchical clustering. So we take the lifetime um, and death minus birth to be our variable. And for this, we check uh, the clustering of uh, the lifetimes. So uh, for this, we need to define some distance in order to build the clustering. So we took uh, the distance uh, to be such that, that as we go far from uh, the diagonal, we can have other clusters. And this is good for us because we know that as we go far from the diagonal, um, uh, the, the topological signals are far from the, um, from the diagonal. So therefore, um, uh, we use uh, this uh, distance. Um, in addition, uh, we took um, the complete linkage clustering. And now uh, we ignore the clustering which has less than 5% uh, uh, or 2.5% oh, of uh, the persistent diagram points. And we cut, uh, the, we cut the, the tree that we build in two. We cut it or by the 75 uh, percentile or by the 90 uh, percentile. So this is in general uh, the details of the clustering. And now just to uh, get a feeling what this clustering makes. So let's uh, continue back to the, uh, to the first example of two circles. So this is the original uh, persistent diagrams, persistent diagram. And now if we use uh, this clustering that we uh, suggested. So look that we have here one cluster. This is one cluster, and this is the second cluster. So we see that as we go far from the diagonal, we can have more uh, clustering as a function of the distance from the, the diagonal. And, but uh, the difference between uh, uh, B and C is by uh, the criterion where we're cutting the clustering uh, tree. And, um, and if we take, uh, if we take in, the, again, in D, E, F, we see again the first, in D we have the original uh, persistent diagram, the, the points on the original persistent diagram. And, um, and in E and F, uh, we have um, uh, the second uh, criterion. So we see that this clustering um, uh, building as a function of distance from uh, the diagonal. So that, that makes sense. But this is only one uh, data example. <clears throat> but if we now uh, take 100, uh, for example, if we take 100 um, and data sets that behave the same as the two circles, we want to compare uh, the clustering that based on the original uh, model and the clustering that based on the uh, refined model, and all these with the clustering of the real uh, 100 uh, data sets. So here are the results. Um, here I, uh, we took the step of uh, uh, thousand in the MCMC, um, and uh, the difference between these four plots are the criterion and how many um, uh, po how many clustering uh, we ignore. So T seventy five it means that we cut the cluster trees in the seventy five uh, percentile, and P five means that we drop the clusters that have uh, less than 5% of the points. And but it is same, if we have P025 means that we drop clusters that have less than two uh, and half percent of the points in the persistent diagram. So he, we see that the blue is uh, the clustering for the real uh, points in the persistent diagram. And um, uh, the orange is based on the original model, and uh, the yellow is based on the refined model. So we see that the, 
the yellow is much closer to the blue, which means that our refined model works better than the original uh, model. And this is some um, justification for using the refined model instead the original model. Now, what about the identification of the uh, topological signals? So, before we suggested to take the statistics of the maximum TJ, but here we now want to uh, introduce uh, maybe a better uh, tool to test the hypo hypothesis. So we use what we what uh, call the back plot. So the back plot is uh, is like a box plot but in high dimension. But who doesn't who that doesn't know what is the box plot doesn't say too much. So. Uh, so I explain what is the backlog for the two dimension. So the backlog uh, the backlog uh, consists of three convex uh, polygons. The first is the bag, which take the 50% of the points on the persistent diagram, or in general of some set, which we rank them by what we call the two key depth. And this is the bag. The fence, which is not drawn is um, it's, it takes some uh, a factor of inflation factor C, which is a um, um, positive factor, and it just some uh, inflation of the bag. And now this, the third um, uh, um, context polygon uh, is the loop. Um, points that are outside the fence are flagged as outliers, and uh, the other points are surrounded by loop. So, just to make it clear, let's take again the, the two circles, and um, and take again 100 uh, real two circles, and try to um, um, fit them the back plot. So, this is the back plot. But we saw that we have uh, four uh, scenarios for that we can have in uh, in our 100 are real uh, two circles. So if we see if we look at the first picture, so look this is the the bag, and we have one point that is outside the bag. So this is what we really want to find because. Again, we fitted the model uh, for all the connected components points, but without a point at infinity. So therefore, we would like uh, to find only one connected component or one outliers uh, uh, in the back plot, outside of the bag. So here, this is what we want to have, a point that is far from the bag and only one. So this is okay. But we have more three scenarios that we found in the three circles, in the in the two circles example. So here we see one outlier that this is fine, but we see another outlier that is outside the back. But we can ignore this point since since it's very close to the back, and we consider it as noise. So this is fine also. Another case is we have this far point, but see that we have another one. But this is also fine. Why? Look that this is exactly or close to the diagonal. So this is also a noise. So we can ignore this point. And the third case, which is uh, not what we wish to find, is that we cannot identify any, any connected component. But we saw that this fourth case is very rare, and and this the the best uh, case uh, we saw that is this is more uh, common, and where we have the two other cases, these are also okay since we know to ignore the points that close to the back plot and to ignore the points that is close to diagonal. So that's nice. Uh, so now what we did, um, uh, we took um, 
we have 100 persistent diagrams because we want now to consider 100 real uh, um, data sets of two circles. And what we did is as follow. We have for each persistent diagram, we have N1 MCMC. We calculate the backplot and then um, we calculate the outliers. Now we need the, to choose the inflation factor. So uh, in general, um, uh, we, we choose the inflation factor to be three, but we can do uh, much better by, um, by just cut it at some uh, level. So we, for example, we can use uh, this formula. But what we else did is we took, we, we checked for each point on the original persistent diagram, we check how many times this point is classified as an outlier based on this N1 MCMC. So we want to see what is this frequency and we call it the outlier probability that associated with X. So this is in order to, to see if this uh, method of the bad plot can uh, choose in, um, in a high probability, can identify the uh, some point as outlier. But what we did is as follow. If we look at the first um, line here, so we check the outlier number is one, two, three, which means we can recognize only one outlier or we recognize two outliers or three outliers but by the back plot. And for example, if we uh, uh, check um, for one point on the persistent diagram, is it, an, out, is it um, an outlier or not over the N1 MCMC and over the 100 um, um, persistent diagrams, real persistent diagrams. So again, if we um, look at this frequency as the outlier probability. So we count how many times or what is the frequency to have an uh, outlier probability that is higher than uh, 0 0.99. So we have, we checked uh, how many times we have this outlier probability. So we have uh, in uh, uh, dot uh, 93 times uh, well, actually 93 times from 100 times, we recognize that we have one outlier, which is great. And by the same, uh, if we uh, have the outlier probability of over uh, then uh, dot 95, again, we have 90-90% uh, uh, that we have only one outlier. This is also good. And if we look how many times we recognize two outliers or two connected components as a topological signal. So, um, so here we see that this probability is very low and this is good for us because we want to identify just only one um, outlier. Um, so all this behaves, behaves good. But now remember that we want to drop, if we back here, we want to drop uh, the points that are close to the diagonal. So therefore we define some epsilon to be the difference uh, from the diagonal. And we want to drop these points and to see how the frequency uh, is improved or not. So this is the meaning of the epsilon the distance from the diagonal. So here we drop the points that are um, close to diagonal in terms of this epsilon. And we again count how many times uh, we can identify one outlier and two outliers and three outliers. So we see that, that uh, in one outliers, it's pretty close to what we have before. Uh, but for the two outliers, we have that the um, uh, frequency decrease as we wanted to have, and also in three. 
And if we consider the epsilon to be uh, a slight larger, we can see that these numbers are improved. So therefore, we, we think that um, this uh, tool of the bad plot is very good to identify um, uh, the outliers. And so we suggest here that to use the refined uh, model and to use uh, uh, the tool of the bad plot in order to identify uh, the, out the outliers. So um, this is it. <laughs>